at, at the outset, this is being... Thank you for that announcement. We are being recorded. Uh, the plan is for this to go on YouTube, uh, hopefully not virally, but um, for anybody who uh, can't make it today, uh, this will be available and we at the Local Government Boundary Commission are more than happy to answer any questions after the event. Uh, a few words of introduction. My name's Tom Rutherford. I am the lead review officer for uh, the electoral review of Essex County Council at the Local Government Boundary Commission. Uh, we're joined by a representative from Essex County Council uh, and also by my colleague Richard Buck, who's the review manager uh, for the Essex Review. Uh, we have a few slides that we're going to go through. Uh, I think Richard's going to start us off and then I'll tag in in due course. Um, if you do have any questions as we go through, please put them in the chat or we can give you the opportunity to raise your hand and ask them uh, at the end of the presentation. And we're more than happy to discuss any aspect of the process uh, of the electoral review. Uh, I should say this isn't the opportunity to get into specific discussion about precise boundaries. Uh, that's for the consultation process, which is currently ongoing. So that's enough from me for now. I'll start sharing my screen and then hand over to Richard. Yeah, thank you very much, Tom. Uh, I'll just wait until the uh, presentation appears. Thanks, Tom. Um, I just perhaps if I just touch on a few words about us as an organisation first before we uh, dig into the the process of the review itself. Um, we're a small organisation, the Local Government Boundary Commission, of about uh, uh, thirty staff and uh, commissioners, with a chair and vice chair. We um, review electoral arrangements of local authorities across England, um, and we very much look forward to working with you uh, and hearing from you during the process of this electoral review. Um, if we move on to the next slide, Tom. Uh, I suppose the, the, the first question you're asking is, what is an electoral review? Well, an electoral review considers the electoral arrangements for a local authority. And this means it looks at the following things. We look at the total number of councillors for an authority, the total number of divisions, the locations and boundaries between each division, the names of each division, and the number of councillors elected to each division. At the end of the review, we'll uh, make recommendations to Parliament about each of these things in time to be implemented at your election in 2025. So why are we reviewing Essex specifically? We have a responsibility and it's set out in law to review every local authority from time to time. Now, Essex hasn't had a review since 2004. So by the time this review is complete, the current boundaries will have been set 20 years ago and they may not be appropriate for a number of reasons, which we'll touch on shortly. Uh, and we think this is a reasonable interpretation of from time to time. Uh, there are poor levels of electoral equality in this authority, uh, and this is where some councillors represent more or fewer electors than others. And we'll talk about that in a bit more detail in a minute, uh, as it's one of the key criteria we have regard to when drawing up new division boundaries. Our process is split into four distinct phrases. And phase one, uh, which has now been completed, is primarily concerned with councillor numbers. And based on the evidence received during this first phase of the review, the Commission has decided that Essex should have 77 councillors going forward. That's two more than it currently has. Following on from this stage, we've moved into our current phase, phase two of the review, which is uh, the division arrangements themselves. It's those boundaries, etc. And during this stage, we consult with the local community and draw up a set of new division boundaries at the end of the process. Once we propose our final recommendations for new division arrangements, we go through a parliamentary process to make the new arrangements law. Um, and then we have the last phase, which is implementation, which, as I said, is when the new boundaries will be implemented at your next county division in 2025. Um, as I noted, we're currently in phase two of the process, and I'll talk a bit more now about this stage, how it works, what we're looking for and how you can get involved. Well, the initial phase of the review process, which, as I said, we just started, is based on a lot of consultation with local people. I would stress that although we're briefing you now and the consultation will be coming to a close, there will be another chance for you to have you express your views, just to, to reassure you on that point. We don't know the area anywhere nearly as well as people like yourselves who live in Essex. So we really do rely on you, people and organisations across the community, to give us your views on a pattern of divisions 
that make most sense for Essex. There will be at least two opportunities, as I said, for people to give their views about where the division boundaries should go and what they should be called as well. And as I said, the first opportunity is the current consultation. Um, this started um, a, a month or two back and will be completed in July. During this time, we'll be asking people across Essex to tell us what you think of where the new division should go. People can give us ideas for the whole area if they like, or they can focus very specifically on their local neighbourhoods or smaller parts of the county. And we'll talk about the kinds of evidence we're looking in submission shortly. Once the first consultation period has closed, we go through all the submissions we've received and the evidence. And we'll come down to Essex, we'll drive around the whole county, we'll walk around the boundaries, look at those areas perhaps where there appears to be contention, there are differences of views. Sometimes what makes much a lot of sense on a map looks uh, rather bizarre when you actually go and visit the area and vice versa. So we place great store in visiting the area and looking at the boundaries on the ground. Our commission will then develop its draft recommendations and we'll publish these draft proposals. And as I said, we'll consult on these. So there'll be a second round of consultation uh, later on. And this process will start in November and run to February 2024. We'll publish interactive maps and reports outlining how we've reached our draft proposals so people can understand how we've come up with them um, and provide their suggestions. Once that second consultation is completed, we'll then go away and read everything we've received, assess the evidence and make any changes that we're persuaded to make by the views of local people. We'll publish our final recommendations in June 2024. And once the final recommendations have been published, uh, they are set in stone and they cannot be changed after that point. Sometimes we are persuaded to hold a further round of consultation if we want to test some suggestions we've received during the second consultation that are perhaps very different from what we originally proposed. This further consultation is usually just restricted to very specific areas um, if we consider it necessary, but it can help us clarify our thinking before we finalize our draft recommendations. So when telling us your views, however, there are some key things that you should know. We are bound by law to only consider arguments related to three things in law. And these are called our three statutory criteria. The first criteria is what we call electoral equality. We will seek to propose divisions, which mean that each councillor represents roughly the same number of electors. However, we don't demand absolute perfect electoral equality because it's also important that the divisions we propose reflect commu local communities and use clear and identifiable boundaries. And that brings us on to the other two criteria. First one is community identities and interests. We'll seek to propose divisions that keep communities together and reflect the shape of local communities in a particular area. Uh, this is something we rely on local people in particular to tell us about, and we'll go into what we mean by that uh, very shortly. But I would like to assure you this isn't simply a numbers game. We have regard both to community identities and interests and also effective and convenient local government. We try to propose divisions that are coherent, that use sensible uh, and identifiable boundaries, and that have um, that reflect local communication and transport links, and which have names as well, which mean something to people. Um, one important thing to say about these three criteria is that they are balanced and they are all equal. The numbers are not more important than the community evidence or effective and convenient local government. Our task at the Commission is to come up with a set of divisions that provide the best balance of these criteria based on the evidence that we receive during consultation with local people and local organisations. I'm now going to hand over back to Tom and he will take you through in a bit more detail what we mean by these three criteria. Over to you, Tom. Thanks a lot, Richard. Um, as I said, we're going to talk a little bit more detail about what, um, what we mean by particular electoral equality, but also coming on later to community identity, effective and convenient government. For under electoral equality, ideally, every council would represent exactly the same number of electors. In a perfect world, it would look something like this. However, over time, a number of things can happen in the area, which alter the number of electors that different councils represent. You might see new houses built in some divisions, that, but not others, bringing new electors into some areas, but not other ones. There might be a university or a particularly high or low rate of registration in part of Essex, bringing a high number of electors to one or only a few divisions, depending on the distribution. You might have some people leave the area, uh, reducing the number of electors in some divisions, and you might have people moving 
from one part of the county to another. So you can see how an area might become imbalanced over time. We'll try to ensure as part of this review that this imbalance does not recur too quickly. To do this, we've worked with the council officers to come up with a set of electorate forecasts for each polling district across Essex. The um, forecast is for 2029, five years after the end of the review. The idea behind this is to try and future-proof electoral equality for each of the divisions that we propose for this period, five years following the review. The forecasts for Essex have been published. They're on our website. Our aim is to propose a set of divisions that all have electoral variances within 10% of the average for the county by 2029. Moving towards something like this. So that's electoral equality. Our second criteria now is about community identities and interests. As we mentioned, this is just as important to the Commission as electoral equality. We're looking to reflect local communities. It's obvious that you know your areas far better than we ever will. So we are relying on you during the consultation to tell us about the shape of local communities and how they can be reflected within the division pattern. A sense of community can be shaped by the amenities and services people use, as well as local groups and organisations. These might be where you go to use the shops, where you go for school, residence associations can help shape an idea of a community, the sports facilities or the places of worship that you use. Telling us about how you use these kinds of facilities, amenities and organisations, how relevant they are to your sense of place is very important to help us to understand where the communities exist and how to draw boundaries that reflect them. We can't do this just by looking at maps. Quite often, what looks like a dividing feature on a map is actually a uniting feature that pulls a community together. We've got an example here from a recent review in Rochdale. Uh, you can see here, there appears to be a clear dividing line on the boundary, uh, on the map along the black boundary here. We didn't hear very much about communities in this area during the first consultation in Rochdale. So we went with what we thought was the stronger, clearer boundary as part of our draft proposals. But what we heard during consultation was the exact opposite. Local people wrote in to tell us that the patches of land along the black boundaries, they didn't separate communities. They were actually nature reserves that were a uniting feature for the people that lived on both sides. So we'd actually divided their sense of community. You can see on the screen some of the kinds of things we were told. We've got pictures of the nature reserve. There's an online community dedicated to the preservation of these areas. We don't want to split up communities. So we changed our proposals to reflect this new local evidence that was provided. You can see the change in the map on screen now it looks very different from our original draft proposals. The third criterion we're looking at is convenient and effective local government. We're looking for strong, clear, identifiable boundaries that make sense on the ground, and ones that make it as easy as possible for councillors to represent their patch. We're also looking for names that mean something to local people. You can see here a motorway. Excellent example, very strong boundary, very clear which side of it you're on. Motorways, rivers, railway lines, they're physical boundaries, they make it harder to cross, harder to get around um, an area or harder to get from one side to the other. So they can be very good boundaries. We're not always going to get perfect boundaries in an area, but we'll look for the strongest available boundaries. Any submissions that you do make to us should consider these, th these three criteria I've just gone through. In particular, please do tell us about your communities, how they can best be reflected in a pattern of divisions. And do give us a reason for something you're proposing. If you want a particular boundary in an area, or you've got two or three parishes that work closely together, don't just tell us you want that boundary or that grouping. Tell us why you want it. It's the why that's the most important. Quick note about a few rules we have to follow during the review. Um, Essex County Council has requested a single councillor division review. We're aiming to create a pattern of divisions represented by one councillor apiece. 
this isn't an absolute rule. We can create a two member division if it, we consider it better reflects the criteria that we just talked through. But a single councillor division is going to be the starting point. Uh, because Essex is a two tier county uh, in terms of local government, we have a number of other rules that have to be followed. Every division has to be within a single district and borough. Um, this means it may be simple to think of this as 12 mini reviews rather than one overarching one. Um, each district and borough gets an allocation of county councillors depending on the electorate size. And we it will aim to divide as few district and borough wards as possible between different county divisions. It's in the legislation we should have regard to the district ward boundaries. Sometimes we can't avoid splitting them at all, but other things being equal, a proposal that keeps war district wards together, perhaps more likely to be adopted than one which splits more wards, other things being equal. There are also a few very specific rules about parishes that we have to follow during an electoral review. We can't create or abolish parishes. This can only be done as part of a community governance review, which is responsibility of the district and borough councils across Essex. We can't amend the external boundaries of any parishes as part of an electoral review. Again, the process for this is a community governance review. If we draw a division boundary through a parish, we have to create a parish ward. This is what we mean by that. Uh, you can see a parish here. I think this is Lymington in Dorset, I believe. If we were to draw a brand new boundary, the red line running down the middle of this, we would have to create two parish wards, one on either side. So the, con the constituent parts of the parish become parish wards so that every parish ward is every parish electoral area is within a single district ward and within a single county division. We wrote to every parish council at the start of the consultation in Essex and we will always write to every parish council at the start of every consultation stage. There are no secrets here, we don't want to sneak this past anybody, we do want and need your help. There are a few things that we can't consider during the review. We don't care about the politics. We're not interested which party might, might not be elected in a proposed division. In many cases, the map is going to have to change. We've already mentioned there are going to be a different number of councillors across Essex. Um, the electors may have moved around even within a district that has the same number of councillors. The process of change is going to have knock-on effects across the council area means the status quo is often not a viable option. We don't consider parliamentary boundaries. We're getting a new set of parliamentary boundaries coming out this month, but they're dealt with under a separate set of rules and by a different body. They build their constituencies from wards and divisions, not the other way around. Our review won't change postcodes, won't change addresses. As far as we've seen, it has no impact on house prices or insurance premiums. And we can't change the external boundaries of the authority. Essex is going to stay looking exactly like Essex does. All the districts and boroughs within Essex are going to stay the same. We can't change any of those external boundaries. All right, very quickly, the, um, the parliamentary phase of the review. Um, after we publish our final recommendations, we turn those into law by presenting them to Parliament. We lay an order in both houses for scrutiny. Um, it sits there for 40 days, and if nobody objects, it becomes law. It is worth noting that Parliament can't amend our orders. It can only reject or agree them on block. Uh, touch wood, none of our orders have been rejected since LGBC was set up in 2010. So we would be very optimistic that the parliamentary process will be relatively smooth. And if there's no objection, so it, the order becomes law. And then we then move forward to implementation, where the new electoral arrangements will be implemented at the Essex County County elections in 2025. So we've talked a lot about consultation and needing your help. How do you get in touch with us? Um, 
there's lots of ways to get in touch. You can email us. Uh, we've got a relatively new website, which makes it quite easy to look at the existing boundaries. We'll put our draft proposals up there when they come out later this year, so you can compare. Um, you can make a submission directly on the website. Uh, you can write to us. Um, we're on social media and we're always happy to take a phone call if that happens, but we can't accept formal consultation submissions through those channels, but we're more than happy to have a conversation, answer any questions about the process and try and help you out and make the process as smooth and pain-free as possible. Right, that's enough from me. If you've got any questions, more than happy to answer them. I'm gonna end the slideshow now and Stop sharing. If we do have any questions, we can either use the Q&A function or put something in the meeting chat. I've got a raised hand, um, Tom. Um, would you yeah. be happy if I allowed By the individual means. to speak? Okay. Absolutely. Uh, Councillor Highland, you should be able to speak now. Yeah, thank you. Um, thanks for that slide deck. Uh, will the deck be shared first of all? We're happy to do that, yes. We can uh, send that to our yeah. colleagues uh, at Essex and ask them to uh, share it around. There's also, um, the you, you mentioned a, a local governess review as well. Um, so at um, city council level, uh, they're looking at the uh, changes and boundaries. Are you um, looking at those in lights with your review as well? The Any community governance review which takes place will take place and be implemented after um, the conclusion of this review. Um, the we will be. We are working on the existing parish, town, city council boundaries as a given for this review. We're not. Um, we're not working on it, on any changes throughout the process. Uh, the boundaries as they are now will be the ones that we propose our div our divisions on. There is a process after the. I'm not, not going to go into detail because it's technical. Uh, there is a process after the review where if there are changes to parish boundaries we can tweak uh, either district ward or county division boundaries to match those new parish boundaries. Thank you. Uh, question in the chat from Russell Collins Park. Do a lot of boundaries get changed? Um, short answer is it depends. Um, we, we start off with a blank map. We start off with, uh, with no presumption that the existing divisions are the correct ones that sh should be changed only in extremis. However, having said that, when my predecessors back in 2004 did, their, did the review then, they were working on very similar sets of rules and criteria. So something that was a strong boundary, a railway line, a motorway, hasn't changed since then. So that would quite likely, if it still works in terms of the communities, if it still works in terms of the electoral equality, there's no, we're not going to be changing things purely for the sake of changing them. But equally, we're very well aware that communities change and evolve over 20 years or so. Um, a set of divisions that reflected communities that reflected the distribution of the electorate in 2004 may well not reflect that in the best possible way in 2024 or even 2029 at our electorate forecast. So there will be there will be some changes because we're adding two councillors in. The status quo will not hold across the entirety of Essex. Whether a lot or relatively few boundaries change is very much up to the evidence that we get in during the consultation period. I'm just say, uh, Suzanne Walker, um, Chancellor City Council, you talk about the community governance review that's come into effect. Yes, we are aware of that. Um, there were actually, uh, as Tom referred to, the, the technical tweaks at the end, there were some related alterations uh, to the um, 
borough wards, I believe, uh, in uh, Chelmsford City Council's consequence. So we are we are aware that um, that has happened, and we will have an up to date layer of mapping in terms of the parish layer, which we'll be using as the basis of this review. So so please rest assured on that point. Thank you. Happy to take any other questions or concerns or queries. Nope. Doesn't look like it. Can't well, see any more. Uh, well, on behalf oh, of sorry, myself, there's just what, one that's just come in um, <laughs> in the Q and A. Um, from Christine Barlow, a parish clerk. If we're proposing a change of parish boundary for the constituency review, will that have a bearing on these proposals? Um, the short answer is, we will not be proposing. We will not be proposing any changes of parish boundaries. Um, now, the constituency review will be coming out. I think the final proposals are due within a couple of weeks, certainly this month. So that will be coming out very shortly. We will be aware of that because we have an academic interest in drawing boundaries but um, as I said we don't sort of have to follow parliamentary boundaries when we're doing when we're proposing new divisions and we are not going to be proposing any changes of parish boundaries we will the only purpose of this review is to propose new division boundaries for the purposes of elections to Essex County Council Well, OK, well, thank you very much for your uh, uh, time this morning. We hope uh, you found it informative. As uh, Tom said, we will share the slides with you um, uh, so you can see all that information in a bit more detail at your own leisure. Do go look at our website. There is guidance on our website that you can uh, look at and it will explain the process and you can read that at your leisure. Um, but it just uh, leads me to say thank you very much on behalf of Tom and myself for your time this morning. And uh, we look forward to working with you throughout the review and hearing from you as well. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate